Okay, day eight, February 4th, time for the midterm. Day eight, so uh, February 4th, we're about to begin. Uh, just a few seconds and then it should be eight o'clock. Hey, good evening, Daniel. How are you? Hello, I'm here. I'm arriving. Hey, I'm glad to see that. Difficult day. Yes, very interesting day. <laughs> interesting, haha. <laughs> yes, I've been very busy again. It's not normally for me. Oh, that's great. That's better to be busy. Yes, I like to to try to help the people with uh, technical support, like uh, commercial support, some solutions, or some difficult when the people have to, to sell or to install something. 
I like to look different options. Okay. Sometimes I, I can't, oh no, the majority I, I, I could find something way how to, to give them a, a solution. Sometimes I can't, it's normal. And never you have the, and never you have the situation you say, oh, uh, this person doesn't understand this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes, of course, yes. But it's, the, it's a lot of people. <laughs> And they, they all of them I I have to say to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yes. many, many years ago I used to work in technical support and customer service for well, um I mean many years ago, maybe almost 30 years ago, I think. I uh, 25, 20, about 25 years ago. It was in 1990, 97, 98, somewhere around there. And the uh, I used to work in telecommunications um, it was in, in the United States. It, it, it was called Cellular One. And we sometimes, at, at that time, um, when I worked in it, uh, cell phones were beginning to start off. They still had the, the bricks, right? The, the people had them. They, they didn't know there was no, uh, there were no smartphones. It was, it was difficult. So sometimes the people would buy the phone for, for emergency. And and they tried to use it because that was the thing. Like the first time you tried to use it in the house. Hey, I I guess I'm calling you from from my cell phone or or something like this. And I remember I tried to explain to someone that that in technical support because they were inside a building. It was a cement building, not the normal house. And I say and they say I don't have service. I don't have service. And only when when and he explained to me. And when I walk. And I have service, and then it goes. I say, okay, go by the window and make the phone call pointing to outside of the window. And then he said, my God, it functions. It works. I said, okay, it is for the construction of the building you are in. Your building has cement, which means it has metal. And this is blocking the signal because in that time, the signals were not very strong. They were, you know, beginning the idea. And he's, and he's so, man. It's it's incredible. You must have studied. You must be an engineer. I how can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> but here in El Salvador is a course yet because a lot of people they know they don't know they don't understand what happening with the signal. They they are blocked because they know they have a cellular phone. It, supposedly the devices has to to work in every place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, it, it, the, the people don't understand the concept of, uh, of towers, of signal strength, of uh, bouncing off, you know, the, uh, line of sight. That they, 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 these are, you know, it, it, it's common sense in, in high school and in science. But if, if you don't pay attention in science or you don't reason, you are an adult and, or, or sometimes many people, they are out in the country and they never study. And that's it. Hey, that good experience. Yeah, so I, I, I sometimes I have to to help them. Not exactly like a customer experience, but like a look a solution. How how they can implement a new new what communication? Uh, new we, we we talk about new solution. Oh, maybe I am exactly looking. At, when, and when, when we don't have a, a, a signal, for example, or, or cable, we have to expand the network. And I'm looking where I have to look at new places where we don't have a cover. Or maybe when, when we are in the new building or a cost of, uh, how do you say, central mall. Because today, uh, here we have a lot of uh, new constructions, so we have we have to how to say aprovechar take advantage take advantage advantage uh, when they are building the the build the building because uh, normally here in El Salvador we don't have a good drop 
where we have to include the cables, different cables, because they just work uh, uh, on the architecture, like a nice uh, inside the building. But when you need to inside uh, some cable or something like that, you can't. So actually, I'm trying to deal with, we are trying to do that. But uh, some, some administrators, uh, they, they can permit us because they have a, a little scare because we could uh, draw the, how they say, diagrams, planos. Oh, the blueprints. The blueprints. They don't like to to share with us because they have a, a little scare. Yeah. Or maybe we have to sign like a confidential document and something like that. But we are trying to do that because in the old building, we don't have a, a good condition how to handle the cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The buildings and, and the locations, right? The location, yes. Yep. Irene, are you there? I, I, you, I know you must be getting boring with all the, the, the conversation of communications. Okay, maybe Irene, yes? Good, good evening, everybody. Yes, I am, teacher. All right. Everything okay, Irene? How was your day today? Uh, my day was very nice. Thank you for asking. Great to hear that. Great. Uh, Jose, how are you? Hi, teacher. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's uh, been good, teacher. All right. Glad. I'm glad to hear that. Well, um, now that we have a few people here, um, I'm going to try to share my screen with you and tell you what we're going to do today. Um, today, it's actually um, quite a bit of things that we need to get done, all of them referring to listening. So here, you can see my screen. Um, we're going to finish off the connecting content questions, okay? This is the main one, remember. Um, we have a technique that we're using. That technique is always reading the question first, looking at uh, reading the multiple choices, and then listening, making our selection, and then listening again to verify if it's okay or not okay. Now, of course, if there are words that we don't know when we read the questions or the answers, we need to look for them. We need to discuss them. For example, in number one, it says, what can be said about fish rubbings? And if immediately you are not clear what fish rubbings are, it's probably going to be really difficult to understand the listening. So it's important to at least get those main ideas or the big topics first, right? Okay. Now, number two, what is true about Mughal Emperor Jahangir? Well, I, maybe you don't know the words, but we know that from grammar, when the word begins with a capital letter, we know that it's the name of someone or the name of a place. So in that case, it's just about listening for, the, for that name of what you think it's the way it's pronounced and so on for the others. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to be pairing up with our partners and we're going to try to complete is or finishing off is the connecting content questions. Then we have just a few more exercises. Um, they're regarding always listening, which is a listening test, a listening practice test. Okay. And this is simply using and applying the techniques and the different types of questions uh, with the listening. As you can see, there are several of them. Okay. And all of them offer different types, like uh, what does the person mean? That means inference, understanding from the content or from the tone. Uh, what would the student uh, will? That means kind of questions like what are going to happen in the future, OK? Or what is the purpose of introducing those different things? So this is more about all of the different types of questions that we have been learning for listening to put in practice. And then finally, we're actually, we're going to try to get it done or at least advance because I know that some of you have very busy lives and you very hard at work and at home. And I know that if you don't do it here, it's sometimes a little difficult. So the ideas also begin with the midterm. Okay. There are going to be four types of reading questions. Okay. Um, there's the midterm. Remember is 
for the two sections. This is going to be for reading and for listening, okay? So we have, as you can see, several questions. We have 10 for one part, which is midterm for sections one and two, okay? There are 10 questions for that. And that's it. There's only those 10 questions, okay? What do simplifications do? The former, the latter, just vocabulary, okay? Which one would be the, what are you listening for? It's kind of more about like the ideas of the techniques and things that you learned from those, okay? Now, are there any questions regarding any of those or any of those activities? No? No, okay. It, I guess it's more more than anything, it's just about practice, right? All about practice listening and trying to get the information. Remember, the, the, the hardest part is the type of listening. So if you want to improve this type of listening, you need to change what you're listening to outside of class. Remember, we discussed it. So you need to listen to, you know, a, really just a, maybe higher level like uh, university lectures, conversations, speeches, uh, presentations of products, things like that. Okay. Daniel, did you want to say something? I'm sorry? No? No, 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 thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Irene or Jose, did you have any questions or any comments? So far so good, teacher, thank you. Okay. Okay, my case, I was trying to do the, the midterm set, but in the open question, I didn't have the, the right answer. Maybe it could be my typing, something like that, but I think let someone can help me. Oh, that's great. That's the idea. That's what we're going to try to, to do today. Um, hopefully, we'll get one more person in. Um, that way we can have uh, partners because it seems it's a little weird. We only have, uh, out of all of the students, we only have three people in today. I understand it's Thursday and sometimes the people say, ah, it's the last day of the week and they don't want to do it. So, you know, I, I, I understand the, the stress sometimes. Okay. But we're going to try to to do it, okay? So the best part is um, right now, we're going to start off with the connecting content questions, okay? This is the listening, section two listening. It's exercise number four, okay? That's this part, okay? Um, I'm curious. Uh, I know you, you mentioned that you were finishing the, or you were trying to do the midterm. Did you finish this part already? Jose? Yes, I think so. I okay, all okay. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Daniel, did you finish that section? No, almost. Almost, no problem, <laughs> yes. no problem. And Irene, did you finish that? No, teacher, I advanced uh, this day, but not yet. Uh, not, not yet. But I think I will finish uh, this weekend. Okay, okay, no problem. That's good. So what we're going to do is we have Cecilia here. So we're going to break up into our groups. Um, remember, uh, we're going to try to finish off that. Then the next section is the kind of like a preparing for the for the midterm test. Okay. And then finally, we have the midterm. So uh, remember, the midterm is about 10 questions, and then we're going to go on to the activity. So um, we don't want to waste too much time because those listenings are pretty hard, and it takes a lot of time so, sometimes to get them. So <laughs> every time they make them harder and harder, okay? All right. So let's go to our partners, and let's, bring, let's begin.
Okay, Irene. So uh, we are going to do what section? I, uh, I didn't listen very well, but I guess is the, the number two in reading. Reading? Uh-huh. Uh, Edwin, we are, we are start reading right now? Uh, the, the number two maybe because uh, yesterday I didn't, I didn't into the, the class, but I guess it's the number two, the section number two. Okay, let me help you out. Okay, so where we're going to begin is this section. Okay, this is the listening practice. Um, this is section two of the listening. And from the, you want to make sure that you finish this part. This is the part from yesterday, connecting questions. So uh, it's actually pretty good because um, Daniel didn't finish and uh, you didn't come yesterday. So it helps you that way you can also answer the questions together. After this, you're going to go to the pre-exam. This is like preparing for the exam. That's the listening practice test, okay? And that's this part. This is several listening questions, the different types of listening that we have. And if we have enough time, then we'll begin the midterm. If not, then you will need to do the midterm um, over the weekend in your house. Does, does that help? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, um, Irene, connecting content questions. Yes. I... Tell me. It, 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 did you understand? Was that okay? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, teacher. I didn't know what number is, but there. Okay. Uh, now, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Irene, we are in the section two, listening, connecting content questions. Okay. <clears throat> How do you do with this part or just you haven't completed yet? Mm. Uh, the, the, the listen, the listen, the audio. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you want to, I will click on, just tell me if you can hear. It is okay, the audio? No, I don't hear the audio. Jose, I think you have to click in the little <laughs> box to open into the next, uh, yeah, there you go. And from there, it's easier to, to play the audio. In my computer, the, the audio is on. I don't know if you, you can hear it? No. No, no, no. I think when you put a share screen, there is a little box that you have to click to share the audio. So you, what you need to do is stop sharing the screen. Um, mm -hmm. And then begin, when you begin to share again, you're going to have the little chart. And in the corner, you're going to see a little option of a put computer audio. And you have to click in order for us to listen. Oh, OK. Uh-uh, I got out of my chemistry lab. Yeah. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I can hear. You know what happened? I think I need to refresh the page. One, you didn't come to art class yesterday, did you? Uh-uh, I got out of my chemistry lab late. Anything important I missed? Yeah, 
Dr. Matthews has arranged for us to meet at the art museum next week. Um, next Tuesday. I think that's the 26th. Because the museum's got a special exhibition on fish rubbings. Fish rubbings? Uh, what's that? Not a hands-on exhibition, I hope. No. Well, uh, not exactly. You missed a good lecture, though. Fish rubbings. It's an ancient art form in which fish are used to make prints. Sounds slimy. Where was this practiced? Um, in the Far East and by some native peoples in America. Will Dr. Matthews expect us to make some of our own fish rubbings afterwards? I suppose that's up to you. I think it might be interesting to give it a try. What can be said about fish rubbings? Okay, I don't know if you'll find it. The right answer or yes? Uh, let me see. Um, mm, mm, mm. We have to choose those two for the option. Uh, uh huh. The the letter A and C. Hmm? I I think. Yeah, but uh, let me see. I'm not sure about the meaning of which Robin. Um, Fish rowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you want to let move to the to the second question. Okay. Two. The world's heaviest gold coin is worth millions of dollars. It was minted in the year 1613 in India. The name of its issuer, Mughal Emperor Jehangir, his name is stamped on the coin. Prior to the reign of this emperor, prior to his reign, rulers in India had to obtain permission to mint coins from the caliph, the ruler in Baghdad. Okay? However, Emperor Jehangir changed this tradition, okay? He um, started his own policy of issuing coins, coins in his own name. It was during the time of the Mughal dynasty that many art forms were encouraged to flourish. Emperor Jehangir supported the arts. Therefore, it's not surprising that the art of minting coins began and um, reached its peak of perfection during his reign. What is true about Mughal Emperor Jahangir? Okay. How do you think about it? Yes, um, B and D, uh, because uh, they he encourage uh, encourage the fellowship. Okay. Okay, we we'll move to the third one. Okay. Three. When microscopes are referred to, most people think of optical microscopes. These instruments were developed principally to meet the needs of the biological sciences. They aren't that useful for metallurgists. They, uh, metallurgists have large and awkwardly shaped specimens. So those who need to examine metal objects or metal structures use a metallurgical microscope. This is a special, uh, the observing and illuminating systems of a metallurgical microscope are mounted in a way that allows adjustment for accommodating odd-shaped samples. Metallurgical microscopes are equipped with devices that provide the capacity to measure an object in the X, Y, and Z axes. 
These microscopes are frequently used in the field instead of in the laboratory. So they must be, must be more durable. How is a metallurgical microscope different from an optical microscope? Not exactly. You missed a good lecture, though. Fish rubbings. It's an ancient art form in which fish are used to make prints. Sounds slimy. Where was this practiced? Um, in the Far East and by some native peoples in America. Will Dr. Matthews expect us to make some of our own fish rubbings afterwards? I suppose that's up to you. I think it might be interesting to give it a try. What can be said about fish rubbings? Es el número uno. Number one. The audio is for number one, for number two, for number three. <laughs> Michel, two, for, ten, for, for three. All? Ah, yes. For all. <laughs> uh -huh. for, or for all. For all, in, in my case, uh, for number one, the answer may be the, the letter B. The priest weren't me. Letter B, okay. I guess. Mm -hmm. The prince was limy. Mm -hmm. Slime, slime, slime. Mm -hmm. it's, it's slime. What do you think? Uh, the letter B and the letter T. This one, B okay. and D. Both, both answer. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, both answer the, the option. I don't know mm -hmm. if. if would you like to run all the audio or we are stopping every every numbers did I you put... first of all you had to read the question and the Before. choice yes would you like to read the question different choice okay uh, 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 okay what true no Masiva, what's true about Mughal Emperor Hagan here? I don't know who is Mughal Emperor Hagan here. <laughs> he was from Baghdad. He did not follow meeting tradition. He sued coins in the Khalid's name. He encouraged many art from to flourish. Do you know what is what does mean coin coin? No, no, not exactly. Mm. No, I don't know. Mm. Khalid's name. No. We could look. The word coin. Coin, huh? <laughs> Coin. Yeah. Coin. It's like uh, the the money for quarters, dimes, nickels. Oh. These are the coins. Coin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Like nickel. A nickel is a type of coin. Exactly. A quarter mm -hmm. is a type of coin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A coin is a nickel too. Yes. So the coin is the name for all of them. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. ah, okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. I will put the second one. Creo que es esto. Let me check. No, it's not working. <laughs> uh -huh. I think I think you have to close and and put again. And start again. Yes, close and start again in the corner. In the ah, corner. Sure. Yes. No, 
algo le pasó. Me da mi strike again. Ok. One. You didn't come to art class yesterday, did you? Uh-uh. I got out of my chemistry lab late. Anything important I missed? Yeah. Dr. Matthews has arranged for us to meet at the art museum next week. Um, next Tuesday. I think that's the 26th. Because the museum's got a special exhibition on fish rubbings. Fish rubbings? Uh, what's that? <laughs> not a hands-on exhibition, I hope. No. Well, uh, not exactly. You missed a good lecture, though. Fish rubbings. It's an ancient art form in which fish are used to make prints. Sounds slimy. Where was this practiced? Um, in the Far East and by some native peoples in America. Will Dr. Matthews expect us to make some of our own fish rubbings afterwards? I suppose that's up to you. I think it might be interesting to give it a try. What can be said about fish rubbings? Call me the second one. Two. Okay. <laughs> the world's heaviest gold coin is worth millions of dollars. It was minted in the year 1613 in India. The name of its issuer, Mughal Emperor Jehangir, his name is stamped on the coin. Prior to the reign of this emperor, prior to his reign, rulers in India had to obtain permission to mint coins from the caliph the ruler in Baghdad, okay? However, Emperor Jehangir changed this tradition, okay? He um, started his own policy of issuing coins, coins in his own name. It was during the time of the Mughal dynasty that many art forms were encouraged to flourish. Emperor Jehangir supported the arts, Therefore, it's not surprising that the art of minting coins began and um, reached its peak of perfection during his reign. What is true about Mughal Emperor Jahangir? No. Yeah, okay. He gave a couple of examples. One was, um, suppose a man earns a certain known salary and then make some big purchases way beyond what someone on his salary could afford. He, he might buy a luxury yacht or a new beachfront apartment or something. And this happens around the time he is alleged to have stolen a large sum of money. This is not direct proof, but it is circumstantial. It would help build a case against him. Right. And it could be used in a court of law, right? Yeah, right. Unless the connection is really weak... Didn't Dr. Bryant say that, in fact, most convictions in court are based on circumstantial evidence? Yeah, I remember him saying that. Most people have the opposite idea, maybe from watching too many TV dramas. But in real life, circumstantial evidence is considered very persuasive. A strong circumstantial case is often better than an eyewitness description. Okay, what do you think about this one? The evidence, for the evidence, uh, maybe, uh, bueno, eh, <laughs> the letter C, prosecutors often use it to gain a uh, conviction. Conviction, conviction. Conviction, I don't know. Conviction, conviction. Pro prosecutors. Prosecutor. Prosecutor uh -huh. also, I I think prosecutor teacher. How do you how do you pronunciation the uh, these sentences? Prosecutors often use it to gain a conviction. Ah, okay, thanks. Prosecutors often use it to to gain a conviction. Okay. Yes, thank. Okay, lads.
Wish another audio over here. Listen to part of a lecture in an architecture class. So, now I'd like to focus on the Prairie School of Architecture, which developed the most significant architectural style in North America in the first decades of the 20th century. The main influences on this style came from several places. For example, the philosophy and practice of the architect Louis Sullivan. Now, you may remember that Sullivan liked to say that form follows function. In other words, the shape and structure of a building should follow, should, should depend on the purpose, the intended use of the building. There was also the English arts and crafts movement. That was important around this time, too. That was a second important influence. And I should mention traditional Oriental themes, which also played an important part in the Prairie School ideas. Now, the students and followers of Sullivan, the most famous of whom was Frank Lloyd Wright, developed these themes and ideas into a truly American style, a style expressing a belief in the unity of mankind and nature. Now, when people think of architecture, they, they often think of large public buildings. But most of the effort of the Prairie School was devoted to domestic buildings, mainly houses for well-to-do private citizens. So, can anyone here describe to me any of the important features of Prairie School houses? Didn't they mostly have long horizontal lines rather than a vertical appearance? Yes, yes, they did. That's certainly part of it. We can say that the most visible external features of this architecture were horizontal lines and heavy roofs projecting away from the walls. The shapes were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat prairies of the Midwestern United States. But somewhat ironically, I suppose, most of these houses were actually built in more urban areas, especially in the Chicago suburbs, rather than on the prairies themselves. Okay, now, what about the insides, the interiors? Didn't they want to do away with small rooms? Well, in a sense, yes. Um, there was certainly an emphasis on keeping the number of separate rooms to a minimum, um, opening up living space, and uh, designing internal walls so that the light and view created a sense of unity. The idea was to reduce the number of interior corners typical of traditional European houses. See, prairie school architects thought of this, of this traditional home as confining, both physically and, and also spiritually. So, by ridding the inside of houses of, of so many rooms and corners and walls, they hoped to create a feeling of, of movement and freedom. Their ideal of beauty was to try to make the living space more compatible with human proportions and living requirements. Often, large fireplaces were built at the center of the overall design rather than attached to an outside wall. And this gave additional structural support to the building, so it further allowed the building to get by with fewer interior walls. Now, let me add that in line with their belief in the importance of nature, these architects related the interiors to the surrounding natural landscape by their use of windows that were continuous ribbons of glass. So, in that way, the outside and inside of the houses were more closely related. Other ways they suggested the importance of nature were in designing terraces projecting from the external walls with parapets, walls that were used as as planting boxes for flowers and shrubs, and 
deep roof overhangs that led the eye toward the horizon. Of course, not all prairie school houses had all these features, but certainly we can say that there was a general tendency among these architects to provide their designs with many of them. Okay. Communication disorders can be improved to, to some degree with the help of a speech pathologist. What is true about communication disorders? Mm -hmm. <sighs> For me, perhaps B. B? B. I have B. Yes. B. B. Mm -hmm. B. C. B. C. A speech pathology can help people with communication disorder improve their ability to communicate. Yes, B and C. Okay. We will you send. Ahí están, ¿verdad? Le de mí. 12.5. Son fish. <laughs> mm. Mm. PD. The art was practiced in various cultures. Mm, it's a machine, it's a dying art. It paints words, it's funny. Um, May I repeat again? A, A and C. Uh -huh. A and C, A C. A C, mm -hmm. what do you think, Irene? For number one. Yes. I I I see the letter B D, but maybe in the in the audio mention the about cult culture maybe culture. the letter uh -huh. the letter A, but I'm not sure is the letter A in the letter B or the letter C. <laughs> Okay, but choose that one. In the second one, what is true about the Mughal Emperor Hahangir? Mm, no, there in that question, I'm not sure. Okay, we repeat the audio. to close and had to look again. <clears throat> you did didn't you come to art class yesterday, did you? Uh -uh. Did you listen? I got out of yes. my chemistry lab late. Anything important I missed? Yeah. Dr. Matthews has arranged for us to meet at the art museum next week. Um, next Tuesday. I think that's the 26th because the museum's got a special exhibition on fish rubbings. Fish rubbings? Uh, what's that? Not a hands-on exhibition, I hope. No. Well, uh, not exactly. You missed a good lecture, though. Fish rubbings. It's an ancient art form in which fish are used to make prints. Sounds slimy. Where was this practiced? Um, in the Far East and by some native peoples in America. Will Dr. Matthews expect us to make some of our own fish rubbings afterwards? I suppose that's up to you. I think it might be interesting to give it a try. What can be said about fish rubbings? Two. The world's heaviest gold coin is worth millions of dollars. It was minted in the year 1613 in India. The name of its issuer 
Mughal Emperor Jehangir, his name is stamped on the coin. Prior to the reign of this emperor, prior to his reign, rulers in India had to obtain permission to mint coins from the caliph, the ruler in Baghdad. Okay? However, Emperor Jehangir changed this tradition. Okay? He um, started his own policy of issuing coins, coins in his own name. It was during the time of the Mughal dynasty that many art forms were encouraged to flourish. Emperor Jehangir supported the arts. Therefore, it's not surprising that the art of minting coins began and um, reached its peak of perfection during his reign. What is true about Mughal Emperor Jahangir? The number one is the, the first of three. I see. When microscopes are referred to, most people think of the optical two, microscopes. The, the third one. These instruments were developed principally to meet the yes, needs yes, of the biological sciences. That. They aren't the that useful two. for metallurgists. The number, uh, they, uh, metallurgists have large and awkwardly shaped specimens. The number two, sorry? The third option, BD. Third option. Mm -hmm. Y las Oh, the teacher is here. <laughs> okay, teacher, just we had a, a question. When we finish this course and the next ones, is a, is a for obligation to send us or is an option for us to, to go to to what to do with the, the toy test? No, uh, to do the oh. toy to do the toy test is an option, the same as a tofu. Uh, uh, you can do uh, one or you can do zero. It's not an obligation to, to do the exam. And we will finish the, this model and the next one. Yes, in support is completed the, the course for us. Yes. When, you, when you finish this module and the next one, that's it. You, you graduate, you are, at, you are at the maximum level and the rest is only with practice that you can become or you can improve. And, you can take the exam if you want to. Okay. Um, for example, this audio that, that is longer, that is, for example, immunity. What is a good technique to memorize? For example, I think there is a, a lot of information about the during the the audio. What is yeah. going to be a good technique in order to? To, go, to have a, the right answer or to try to. Right, the audios are an example of how the test is. Um, the in, in the actual test, they have a lot, a lot of different tests. It's not, for example, if you take the pies, the pies is the same for everyone, but in the TOEFL or the TOEIC, they have many different versions and you have one week, one version, another week, a different version and, and they have, many different forms so it's impossible to memorize but that's why you practice the format that way you understand what type of uh, listenings and questions they ask you okay is that okay jose yes yes okay mm -hmm. okay Try to this one. Okay. So we've outlined a number of techniques for effective decision making. Uh, now let's focus on one approach to figuring out how to uh, make good business decisions. Okay, so uh, one way of deciding whether to go ahead with some new investment project is to perform what's known as CBA, or Cost-Benefit Analysis. 
CBA can estimate and total up the money values of both the benefits and costs to a community, institution, or business to establish whether an investment choice is worthwhile. So let's assume you've generated solutions to a business problem and have thought really carefully about which way to go. You think you have the best solution available, but before going ahead with any investment decision, what you need to do is add up the value of the benefits as well as the costs of this action. Now, uh, what I mean by costs and benefits here is always, it's, it's always expressed in monetary terms. So, um, we find out what the cost is in money terms and also what the benefits might be also in money terms. Uh, then, we subtract the costs from the benefits and we can choose whether to go ahead or not. All right, in simple terms, costs tend to be what we spend on something. Um, say, for example, a new piece of machinery. And, uh, and benefits are uh, what advantages, expressed in money units, we get over the lifetime of that machinery because of having purchased it as opposed to, well, <laughs> not having it or having some alternative. Um, in, in such a case, we can figure out a fairly simple CBA just by looking at expenses and uh, then subtracting them from the savings brought about by uh, improved, uh, the improvements of introducing the machinery. That would include things like the savings met by not having to pay salaries to employees who previously did the work of the machine. We could add the fact that the machines make fewer mistakes, <laughs> we hope, than human employees so there will be fewer rejected products. But on the other hand, we have to factor in the cost of running the machines, uh, such as maybe the increased electricity bill, the cost of repairs, and of course, the cost of training someone to operate the new equipment. So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. Cost-benefit analysis really only works if we are careful to add in all the costs and benefits. Uh, costs, especially, are sometimes hidden. For example, in, in paying for this new stuff, we're taking liquid money and spending it, right? So we're no longer paid interest from having that money in a bank or otherwise invested. Okay, so we have to subtract that loss from the benefit side. Then, suppose also that the new machines are noisy. That means soundproofing. That's a cost. Or, or will it take up more space than the replaced workers and therefore require an addition to the building? These are less obvious costs, but they should be factored in to get an accurate picture. When we do CBA in a more public domain, uh, say, on the building of a new road, the calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. So, how do we measure the benefits here? Does the road improve or worsen people's lives? A new road may, for example, uh, damage some wildlife habitat, or some residential community may be inconvenienced by the noise or air pollution. On the other hand, the new road could improve property values by decreasing commuting times. Um, it could also save human lives since it's safer than the old road. Okay. As you can see, the listenings are quite long. They take quite a bit of time to to do i mean imagine it's oh it, it's amazing it's practically an hour and really you 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 did one one lesson or or one in the part of the other one right it's it's really hard so please try you need to complete the midterm over the weekend because really i think it's going to be almost impossible during the week because during the week next week we begin the next part 
okay? We're done with the readings. We're done with the listening. We're going to be beginning the speaking. We're going to be looking at uh, other parts. So take the weekend, finish. If you haven't finished part one, finish part one. If you haven't finished, if you haven't finished part one and two, then you, you need to use more time to complete those exercises, okay? So I hope you have a good weekend. We'll begin on lesson three on Monday, and please finish up lesson two. Veronica, I see you have a question. No, no teacher. Oh, okay, I saw that the, the hand was raised. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys, have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. See you. Hey, see have you. a nice see you. Night. See you. Take care.